start somewhere. And as we progress from being beginners, we learn. We learn from positive experiences and we learn from our mistakes, hopefully. And those lessons make us better runners in so many different ways. So what if I told you there is a way to speed that process up? Advice distilled from years of experience and common mistakes. And it doesn't have to just be for beginners. There could be a tip in here for everyone. And that's where we begin. What I'm gonna give you today is essentially the cheat sheet, the fast track. My top 10 tips going from 10 to one that you can use to take your running to the next level so that you don't make the mistakes that I did or Mary did or most runners that I've ever seen make. And sometimes you have to make your own mistakes, but these are the tips I think, and they're not all born out of mistakes, they're born out of the learning of running. These are the tips that I'm gonna give you that can speed up the process to take you from absolute beginner to someone that's so in love with the process of running, to someone that is so in love with being a runner that you can't imagine never being one again. That's where I'm gonna get you. And tip 10, let's start with an easy one, is journaling or getting a calendar. Finding some way in the early days of recording your runs, recording if you're doing a journal. And by the way, some of the top runners in the world, Elliot Kipchoge, they keep a journal of every run they've ever done. They write it down after, and not just the distance that he did or the heart rate they did, how they felt, how the run went, what happened during the run, what shoes they were wearing. They kind of, it's like a, an informal record of the history of what you've done, which you can do with apps nowadays. And it's quite highly motivational, as well as just being a really nice record of what you've got, of what you've done. But on the other side of that, of course, having a calendar is highly motivational if you green tick every session that you've done. And if you hit most of your sessions, you've got a lot of green ticks. That's motivational too. And down to nine, is go out and buy some nice gear. Now, you might think, well, I don't know if I'm gonna be running long term or not, but I, I want to. The, the best thing that you can do is get out there and buy yourself some new clothes, some new running gear, and some good new trainers. And it is an investment up front, but what it'll do is, first of all, it'll motivate you. You wanna wear your nice stuff when you go out and run. But second of all, and probably more obviously, is trainers, a good level of trainers, are gonna reduce the chance of you getting injured because if you're wearing the right trainers for running rather than just some generic trainers for everyday walking around then you're much less likely to get injured because these trainers are specifically designed to deal with the rigors of running so you got a two for there motivational and looking good in at eight and it's my first psychological tip and there will be some psychological tips coming along is accept failure as part of your journey no one ever got to where they wanted to get to without any type of setback. And you know what? If they did, it probably wasn't worth getting there. So, you know what? Injuries might happen. You, you don't want them to and you want to reduce the chances of them happening, but they might do. Accept it and deal with them when they do as a runner would and try and get yourself back to running. Missed sessions might happen and that's okay. My general rule is just try not to miss two in a row and that's all right, sometimes life happens. Essentially what I think I'm saying with this tip is just accept that progress is not linear. Sometimes there will be setbacks and sometimes there won't and that's okay. And in at seven is add structure by following a plan. Now, a lot of runners spend a lot of time in the beginning when they're starting their running, just going out and running. And you know what, that's okay. But there's probably a way that you can do it more safely and there's probably a way that you can speed up your process and that's just by following a training plan. There are so many out there. In fact, on this channel alone, I've done training plans for beginner to 5K, beginner to 10K, half marathon, marathon, and intermediate to whatever. You name it, I've done it. There is a plan for you on this channel if you want it, so check out the training plans playlist and you'll probably find something appropriate, but I'm not obviously the only place that does training plans. There are a lot out there. If you follow structure, you stay safer and you probably speed up that process and eliminate some of the mistakes that you might make if you're early in your running journey. Down to six vary your sessions. You want to make sure that A, your body is kept guessing, but B, your mind is kept fresh. You want to get rid of the boredom, increase the joy. Some days maybe go on the road, some days go on the track, some days go on the trail, some days go on hills, some days go on flat. 
Never let yourself do the same thing over and over again because it just sometimes gets a bit stale, sometimes gets a bit boring. And you know what? When you get deeper into your training, you realize there are different sessions that train different things to help you in different ways in running. So a good starting point is to vary your sessions and that way you're at least used to it for when you move on again and you learn some sessions that train specific things. And it just it saves being bored. And in at number five, and something that I'm really an advocate of because I've really benefited from it personally is cultivate your passion. If you think that you're gonna like running, if you think that you're gonna wanna stay in running for a while, then find YouTube channels on that subject. Of course, if you're watching this one, mine is one, but then you've got Ben is Running, Fod Runner, Welsh Runner, Ben Parks, Flora Beverly, Philly Bowden, that running guy channel. I could, I mean, I literally could go on and on. Seth Demore, Kofuzi, I'll stop there. But there are channels for you to watch and to consume. And if you don't like watching too much YouTube, read books. Some of the most inspirational books that I have read have been books about running or psychology of running or triathlon. And it really gets the juices flowing. It really gets you just passionate about being in this life which is an amazing life to be in. So don't be afraid to cultivate that passion early and often. And engage with the community, engage with this community. Drop me a comment right now to say that you're engaging in this community. In at number four, and this one is another psychological one, it's make sure that you attach yourself to the process and to the long term. Running is for life, not just for Christmas, but it is for life, as in you should be doing this long term. It's very good for you. So how are you going to attach yourself to it for life? A, see it as that, and B, make sure you're not attaching yourself to any kind of outcome like I am training for beginner to 5k, that's the end point, or I'm training for a particular race, marathon, that's the end point. These are not endpoints. they're just part of your process. In essence, they're the first outcome of the process of being healthy for life. That's what you want to attach to. So make sure process over outcome psychologically and you can't go wrong. Because if you don't make that outcome, if you don't make that goal race or that goal distance, if you're only attached to the outcome, it's pretty devastating. If you're attached to the process, you go, oh, I'll just do something else. I'll go again, I'll train some more because I love the fact that I am just training. We're into the top three now, and at number three, something that, again, I've really benefited from personally is find a club or a group or people that are like-minded to you. Your vibe attracts your tribe, right? So when I started in triathlon in 2012, I immediately joined Seven Oaks Tri Club because I just wanted to be surrounded by people that felt the same way as me and with knowledge that I can learn from and train smarter and better. And that's exactly what happened. I found a group of people that are now my friends, that motivated me, that held me accountable, that told me about races that were happening, how to train, all of that. So don't miss out on groups just because you're a little bit, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be a runner, I don't wanna go out running in public yet. These people, there are so many groups for all types of runners, every single level, and they can help you, guide you, keep you motivated. So don't rule it out, don't be the lone wolf. You can be that down the line, but find friends as well that motivate you and keep you accountable and help you out. Okay, baby, top two. And these are my two most crucial things that you need to do as a runner at the beginning of your journey or even if you're an intermediate and you haven't done this yet. These are so essential. And the first one is build slowly, run slowly. This is a process for life. I've already said it. So what we do is we treat it as such. You're training for a 10K. Is there any rush if you have a little setback? Do you need to hit every session as hard as you possibly can? Of course you don't. That's the quick way to injury. So take a step back. What I always say is take your ego out, pop it in a box because it's the ego that makes us want to train too hard. It's the ego that makes us want to run 4K instead of 3K because we can. Of course you can, but you can't keep doing that long term without something going wrong if that's not the level that you're at. So build slowly, take it slowly, run slowly and relax. Treat it like it is, which is a journey for life. And it's a fun one if you do it in the right way. And this is it, number one. Are you ready for this? And I've said it a lot, but I'm gonna say it again because I truly, truly believe this. Number one, my tip for beginner runners or any runner if you don't already do this, 
is you need to identify as a runner. If you put trainers on and go out of your house to move yourself forward at any pace, then you're a runner and you don't let anybody tell you any differently because anyone that does do that, they're not a proper runner. A runner is someone that builds other people up, that encourages them, that inspires them to get out. So if you go out of your house with the specific aim of moving forwards, perhaps at a faster pace than walking, but not necessarily at the start, then you're a runner. And you know what that will do? It'll mean when you get injured, you won't go, oh, I'm done with running. You'll go, well, I'm a runner, so I do what I can to get myself back. When you have a setback in a race, you go, well, it doesn't matter, I'm a runner, there'll be another race. When you have a bad session where you vomit in a bin, don't worry, you're a runner. Next session, you might not vomit in a bin. Just be kind to yourself. Be a runner. Treat yourself like a runner. Identify as a runner. All the decisions thereafter, they happen because you think you're a runner. And as I say, follow these tips. And it's essentially the fast track. It is the cheat sheet. It will help you stop making the mistakes that I made and countless others have made. And it will drag you into the murky depths of running and exercise. And believe me, once you're in, properly in, there's no getting out but in a good way that sounded actually quite dark it is it in a good way so coming up on the channel me and mary are running a half marathon this weekend so we've got some race videos back also i'm going to link two videos here one is how to build your endurance safely and the other one is an ultimate training plan it can take you from wherever you are to wherever you want to go job done thank you very much see you sunday for the first in a series of our race experiences from the huahin half marathon <laughs> cannot wait